All right, let's talk about the real zeros of a polynomial function. So um, let's remember, real zeros are nothing more than just x-intercepts. They could be called roots, zeros, x-intercept solutions. But really, all we're doing is we are setting the function equal to 0 in, using the y value as being 0 is another way of saying that. And then in order to find them, um, because this is a quadratic, we could factor and hopefully this will factor nicely. This would be x times x. Um, 10 would have to be 2 times 5. And in order to get a positive 7, it would have to be plus 2 plus 5. So then we would set each one of the factors equal to 0 and solve for our x-intercepts or our roots. So we would have x-intercepts at negative 2 and an x-intercept where x is negative 5. Okay, well think about what happened here. We called these factors, but what if I didn't understand about factoring? What if I didn't know how to go about doing that? And really, what in the world is a factor? What does that mean? Remember, factors are things that you multiply together to get a product, an answer of multiplication. But how do we know that something is a factor? There has to be a very, um, you know, real way that we know that. Let's talk about numbers. What if I ask if 3 is a factor of 105? Is it? Well, actually it is. How could I make sure of that? Well, we could divide, couldn't we? We could take 105 and divide it by 3. So 3 would go into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. And when we subtract, we would have 1, drop the next term, and begin again. 3 will go into 15 5 times. 5 times 3 is 15. So it went in evenly. That's what, that's how we know that something is a factor, is because it divides in evenly. We have no remainder. Well, what about that problem that we just did up here? What if I asked, is x plus 2 a factor of this? And I didn't know how to factor. I didn't know how to go from the quadratic to the binomials. But we do know that supposedly, if it's a factor, then it should divide in evenly. So if I were to take and divide that original polynomial by that factor, that potential factor of x plus 2, we could do long division. x times x would give us x squared, and then the x times the positive 2 would be plus 2x, and we would change our signs and combine like terms. 7x minus 2x would be 5x. And then we would drop our next term and begin again. x times 5 would give me 5x. So that would be 5x. And 5 times 2 would be 10. So when we sub uh, instead of subtracting, we change the signs and combine. We have a 0 remainder, no remainder. This is how we know whether something is a factor or not. Now, I want you to look at something else. We knew that in this um, quadratic, we had an x-intercept at negative 2 after we factored it. What would happen if I were to evaluate the original function at negative 2? Well, if I were to do that, I would have to replace the x with negative 2, and we'll see what we get. Negative 2 squared would be 4, and this would be minus 14 plus 10. So we would have negative 10 plus 10 is 0. Isn't that interesting? If something is a factor, then it divides in evenly. If we have a root which comes from a factor, then when we evaluate the function there, we have the y value is 0 because it's an x-intercept. These all work together, and that is the crux of the remainder and the factor theorems.